The primary circuit is the first of a three-part series that discusses the X-ray imaging system's circuitry. Here we have a diagram of the X-ray circuit. This looks terrifying, but we'll break it down into individual parts. Basically, this diagram displays everything that happens electronically from voltage coming into our X-ray machine to selecting our exposure factors to the X-ray tube generating radiation. The first part is the primary circuit. The primary circuit is also sometimes referred to as the control console. Next is the secondary circuit. The secondary circuit is also sometimes referred to as the high voltage section. Finally, there's the filament circuit. The filament circuit is also sometimes referred to as the X-ray tube circuit. So for this video, let's just concentrate on the primary circuit. The primary circuit is the first step in us achieving the amount of power we need to produce radiation. Typically, our X-ray tubes require a current of about 100 to 1200 milliamps and a voltage anywhere from 25 to 150 kilovolts. That is some incredible power. But we don't get that incredible power at the very beginning. At the beginning of our circuit is an AC incoming power supply, and this power comes in at about 220 volts. One typical source of power is the three phase 60 hertz AC power. By using three phase power, the power never drops to zero, the voltage is nearly constant, and we can use a shorter exposure time. After the power input is the line monitor. This line monitor reads the electron flow into the machine. So if there are any power disruptions, the line monitor will recognize those power disruptions. And if a line monitor recognizes a power disruption, it will cause the line compensator to change incoming voltage back to the steady 220 volts. Luckily, this is all done automatically. If the voltage coming into our equipment is anything other than 220 volts, it will disrupt everything downstream. But probably the biggest component in the primary circuit is the KVP selector. The KVP selector is controlled by an auto transformer. The auto transformer adjusts the voltage to anything between 100 to 400 volts. In this diagram, there is a major KVP selector and a minor KVP selector. Newer units have combined these into one KVP selector. So when you are adjusting KVP on your control console, this is the area you are controlling. There's actually a meter that displays the KVP used. Now you might be wondering, I thought that this area of the circuit only has a voltage of 100 to 400 volts, but you said we typically use 25 to 150,000 volts when taking an X-ray. Well, what gives? Well, I'm glad you asked. Further down this circuit is a step up transformer that turns those 140 volts into 25 to 150,000 volts. This KVP meter uses a nifty calculation to, to determine what the initial voltage must be. Because we know what we want the final voltage to be on the secondary side, and we know the number of turns on the primary side of the step-up transformer, and the number of turns on the secondary side of the step-up transformer, it can calculate what the voltage needed to be to send to the primary side. For example, if you want to use 150 kVp, you would input 150 kVp on the control console. The kVp selector on the auto transformer would not select 150 kilovolts, but it would select a voltage that once it passes through the step-up transformer 
would be 150 kilovolts. So if we do the math, we want voltage on the secondary side to be 150,000 volts. The number of turns are predetermined and cannot change. So the number of turns on the primary side would be 1 million, and the secondary side would be something like 375 million turns. If we did the math, then the auto transformer would need to produce about 400 volts to get an end result of 150,000 volts after the step up transformer. Pretty amazing, huh? The last area of the primary circuit is the timing circuit. The timing circuit controls how long the exposure stays on. Our exposures are typically in the milliseconds of length. There's no way you could precisely hold down the exposure switch for 0.2 milliseconds. So this timing circuit cuts off exposure at the precise time. And there are four types of timing circuits. The first is a synchronous timer. The second is an electronic timer. And this timer is the most common in our machines. The third is a mass timer, which terminates when a desired mass is achieved. And finally, there's the automatic exposure control. And this measures the quantity of radiation that reaches the image receptor.